All right, so this video is on the Unit 90 handout, um, which was a homework assignment, but uh, I know I'm not going to be able to be there, so here's the video. Um, so let's see, the first problem is dealing with 90 degree rotations, and the center point is not the origin, so we can't just use that rule that you had where xy turns into negative yx. Um, that doesn't apply here because we're not centered at the origin. And uh, you could move everything left three units and up one and then apply the rules and then move everything back three units and down one. But uh, I think that's probably more work than you want to do. So instead, we'll use some slope triangles on this graph. So if I the, the point that I know for sure is the 5, 2 uh, on the circle. And then I also know the center point. So if I make a little slope triangle right here, straight up and straight over. Oop, it's not quite writing there. Uh, let's see, when I go up and down, the y's change. So it goes from negative 1 to 2. So that's up 3. And then when I go across, the x's change, so it's 2 across. So what I know is that I know that the slope of this one radius here is 3 over 2 rise over run. Okay, let me draw in this next one right here. So the arc is 90 degrees, and this angle in the middle is a central angle. So I know that angle is 90 degrees. And that means that, here I'll draw these in, or I'll highlight the radii here. So there is one radius, and there's the other radius, and they're perpendicular. So I know that this guy's slope is going to have to be the negative reciprocal, negative 2 thirds, right, instead of 3 over 2. So if I draw the slope triangle for this guy, instead of the rise being 3, the rise is now a drop of 2. The run is 3. So if I just think about it as, well, here's my center point at 3, negative 1, and then I go down 2 and over 3 to get to the point A. Well, when I go down, the y's change. So it goes from negative 1 down 2. So I'm going to be at negative 3. And when I go across 3, the x's change. So I'm going to the right by 3, so I'm increasing by 3. So it's 3 plus 3 is 6. So a is at 6 and negative 3. And if I draw in this radius right here, well, you could say, well, this guy's slope was negative 2 thirds, this forms a 90 degree angle, so I'm going to do a slope of 3 over 2 for this one. Negative reciprocal slopes again. Or you could just say, well, this is a 180 degree rotation from 5, 2, and so it's a straight line that goes right through the center here. So if I had to go over 2 and down 3 before, well, I'm just going to go over 2 and down 3 again. So if I do that, uh, let's see, in this case, I'm at 3, negative 1, and then I go backwards 2 and down 3 to get to B. And so when I go backwards 2, the x's change. They decrease by 2, so it's 3 minus 2 is 1. And then when I go down 3, the negative 1 turns into a negative 4. So 1, negative 4 is the other point. Okay, so let's try the next problem. Uh, remember, inscribed angles are angles with a corner on the circle. And so if this is x, then the arc is double that. Or you could think of it as the angle as half of the intercepted arc. So we're going to use this property over and over and over again in these homework problems. So uh, let's just kind of piece our way through this. So x here, uh, notice that if I only draw the arc and its angle that intercepts it for x. Here's x, and this angle right here is 76. So remember, in order to get from the angle, the, inter the inscribed angle to its intercepted arc, I want to double the angle. So x is going to be 2 times 76, which ends up being 152. So this guy up here, 152. 
And if I look at the Y, that's carved out by the inscribed angle 31. So Y is going to be twice 31. So 2 times 31 equals 62 degrees. So Y is 62. Uh, Z, I can get a couple different ways, but Z, probably the easiest way to get Z is, you know that a whole circle is 360. So Z is going to be 360 minus 152 plus 62 put together, which ends up being 146 degrees. So Z is 146. Uh, and then W, you can get a couple ways. One way is triangle equals 180. Or you could say, look at this angle right here. And uh, we know that the arc that it intercepts is 146. And since this angle is an inscribed angle, so you got to ignore that line that connects the 31 and the 76. But if you look at it, this angle right here should be half the size of the arc. So 146 divided by 2, 73 degrees. But probably the easiest way of doing this is just add up the three angles of the triangle to get 180. Okay, so let me shrink this down a little bit. All right, let's take a look at B. B is definitely the harder one here. So um, here, let's take a look at this. If you look at the 80 degrees right here, Notice that the arc that it intercepts is this whole arc, 110 and x put together. So if I draw that by itself over here, here's the 80, and this is x plus 110 degrees for that arc. Well, it's an inscribed angle, and inscribed angles are half of the intercepted arc. So x plus 110 is going to have to be twice 80, which is 160. So then x is going to be 50. OK, so let me clear up what I just drew over here and just put 50 for x. All right, uh, let's try the 102. Let's try doing the same thing with the 102. So the 102 opens up this way. And so the arc that gets carved out there, the intercepted arc, is this whole one right here. So if I draw this one by itself, here's the 102. And here's the arc that it carves out. And we know that that should be double the 102. So that's going to be 204, which is the same thing as 110 plus whatever this guy is. 110 plus, I don't know, I'll call that w since we don't have a w there. So this part right here I'll call w. So then if we solve for w we get uh, 204 minus 110. What's that going to be? Uh, 94. So this is 94. By the way I don't actually know if that's going to come in handy or not but at least we've got it now. So I'll put that right on the picture itself. This is 94 degrees. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Oh, we can figure out the missing arc right here. This arc is going to have to be 360 minus 94 minus 110 minus 50. So 360 minus 94 plus 50 plus 110 ends up being, uh, I don't know, let me work that out real quick. 360 minus 94 plus 50 plus 110 is 106. So this arc is 106 right there. Uh, and now we can figure out what y and z are. So if we look at y, I'll use a highlighter for this. If we look at y, there's angle y, and it opens up to this whole arc 106 plus 94, which is 200. So if I draw the y by itself, here's the y, and it opens up to a 200 degree arc. So that means y is going to be half of that, 100 degrees. And z opens up this way, 
z opens up to the 50 here plus the 106 there, so it opens up to a 156 degree arc. So if I draw z by itself, uh, z ends up being half of 156, which comes out to be 78 degrees. Now you could do this another way. Uh, once you know y is 100, you could actually figure out what z is by just saying, well, this is a quadrilateral, so the sum is 360 degrees in there, and then you could subtract 100, 102, and 80 from 360. Okay, so let me put the 78 right here. And then I wanted you to notice one thing, which we'll come back to again later. Notice this is a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. And notice here, I'm just cleaning up the picture a little bit. Notice that this angle, whoops, this angle here and its opposite angle happen to add up to 180. And this angle here and its opposite angle also happen to add up to 180. So it turns out that in any circle, if I inscribe a quadrilateral, these two angles end up adding up to 180, and those two angles end up adding up to 180. So a little note here, uh, if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then the opposite angles are, they add up to 180, so that's, they're supplementary. Okay, so let's take a look at number three. This is directly related to an example we did in class. Um, so we're rotating about the origin by 110 degrees. So let me draw in this slope triangle first. So the rise is three and the run is six. Um, I can solve for the radius this way. So r squared equals six squared plus three squared. That's 36 plus 9 is 45. So root 45 is r. And I'm just going to leave it as root 45. I'm not going to bother simplifying it for this problem. So root 45 is r. Uh, and then if I connect it, the center to a prime, I know that that's also the radius of the circle here. So that's also got to be root 45. Uh, and we know we're going to involve a slope triangle right here, so I'm going to draw that in. So let's see, what else can I solve for? Uh, I know that the central angle right here is the same as the amount that I rotated around the circle, 110 degrees. So this angle is 110 in the center of my circle. Remember, if I kept this going, you just get this massive circle here. So um, let's see, what else? Whoa. Lost way too much there. There it is. Okay. Uh, we can solve for this angle right here, which I'll call alpha. Because uh, if I know what alpha is, I can add it to 110 and then take both of those away from 180 to get this angle right here. So uh, let's use the 3 and the 6 to get alpha. So that's opposite and adjacent. And so that requires tangent. So tan of alpha equals 3 over 6, so alpha is going to be tan inverse of 3 over 6, which ends up being about 26.565, and then there's some junk attached to it. So that means that theta, which I'll put right here, so theta, let's see, theta is going to be 180 minus the 110 plus the alpha, and then I can just take this that was from the calculator and cut and paste it so that I don't have to worry about decimals. So we get 43.435-ish degrees. So that's this guy, 43.435. Okay, so I'm going to redraw the blue slope triangle right here. And we know that this angle is now 43.435. We know that the radius was root 45. And we know that this point is 0, 0. So really what I need to know is how far over and how far up 
am I going? And then I can figure out where this point is located. So A is the, let's offer A first. That's the adjacent side. The root 45 is the hypotenuse. So if I use cosine 43.435, really I'm just going to cut and paste that number. <clears throat> That's the adjacent side A over the hypotenuse root 45. So then A is going to be root 45 times cosine of that angle, which ends up being about 4.871. So this side right here is 4.871. And then if I use sine, I can get B. So sine of 43.435 is the opposite side b over the square root of 45, the hypotenuse. If I multiply that over, equals b. And remember, you can just cut and paste that in there. So that ends up being 4.612. 4.612. So remember, I'm moving from 0, 0 here. I'm going backwards 4.871 and up 4.612. So if I go backwards along the x-axis, it's going to be a negative 4.871. And then I moved up 4.612. So that ends up being my coordinate right there. OK. Uh, let's see. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Uh, this one mentions to use the calculator. And you'll notice the pi button is in blue. It's right here. So if I wanted to type in pi, I have to hit second and then that button. Uh, so let's see. Find the area of the circle given in number one. So let's go back to number one. Here's number one. And notice here's the radius right here. And I have a slope triangle I can use to calculate what the radius is. It's three up and two over. There it is. Three up and two over. So I'll redraw that down here. So it was three up and two over, and this is the radius. And I need the radius in order to use this formula. So uh, three squared plus two squared equals r squared. So that's going to be nine plus four. Root 13 will be my radius. So then the area of the circle is going to be pi times the radius squared which is pi times root 13 squared, which is just pi times regular 13, or 13 pi. And then if you plug that into a calculator, that will be 13 times second and then pi, 40.841, roughly. Uh, and then in number five, it mentions number three. And it says, you weren't asked to look at an entire circle, just really a region of it, the 110 degree region of that circle. So, uh, and that's shown again right here. And uh, so then it, it asks, what percentage of the whole circle does this shaded sector take up? Well, you know that the whole circle is 360 degrees and my region took up 110 of it. So if I wanted the percentage of the circle, percentage of circle um, for the sector. Really, all I have to do is take the number of degrees of the sector and divide it by the total number of degrees, 110 out of 360. So that ends up being uh, 0.30555 repeating. So I'll just do 0.305 repeating, which is the same thing as 30.55, you know, 5 repeating percent. Okay. Uh, then the other question is, what's the percentage of the, or what's the area of that shaded region of the sector? Oh, and what's the area of the circle? So the area of the whole circle is pi r squared, and we figured out in this problem that r was root 45. So if I put that down here, it's pi root 45 squared, which is just 45 pi, which ends up being about 100. 41.372. The area of the sector, though, is only part of that. And in fact, it's 30% of that, 30.555% of that. 
So really what we do to get the area of the sector is we take the percentage of the circle's area, 110 out of 360, and we multiply it by the area of the circle. So here, I'll write it like this. We want percentage times area of circle. So you could write the 30 point, the, well, you can't write 30% on a calculator. You'd write 0 0.305 repeating times the 141.372 dot dot dot. And if you work that out, you end up with 43.199. Now you could do this another way. The way that a textbook's gonna have you write it out is it'll be this 110 over 360 times pi root 45 squared. But really all that, that, that this is doing is this is the percentage of the circle and this is the area. So you're really just getting a percentage of the circle's area, okay? So I hope that helps a little bit. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.